In just two decades, almost the exact time frame that the US government introduced their now infamous 1992 food pyramid, our metabolic health has collapsed in this country. A massive study published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology found that in 2018, only 6.8% of Americans had what's called optimal cardiometabolic health. That means normal weight, normal blood pressure, blood sugar, cholesterol, and no cardiovascular disease. That means one in every 14 adults. They say these results demonstrate a dire situation for the health of the US population and an urgent need for clinical and public health strategies. And yet, for decades, this food pyramid has told Americans to build our diets on carbohydrates. Six to 11 servings per day, right? That's what makes up the base of the pyramid. While fat and protein were pushed to the top, treated like some garnish. Meanwhile, obesity, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome have surged. Now, this isn't a coincidence. It's a pattern. And the time has come to question it. So a new paper published in Nutrients by Nina Teicholds and a team of medical experts offers an alternative, a new food pyramid, one that actually is based on real world health outcomes and evidence, not outdated ideology. So today I wanna to walk you through this new model and I'll explain what it could mean for the future of food and medicine and metabolic health. So the traditional food pyramid prioritized carbohydrates as the foundation of the diet. Bread, cereal, rice, pasta, they were to be eaten six to 11 times a day. Fats were minimized. And since its release in 1992, rates of obesity, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome have soared. So that 2022 paper that I cited, they showed the prevalence of the optimal waist circumference between the years of 1999 to 2018, it dropped from 34% of the population having an optimal waist circumference to only 24. Elevated waist circumference rose from 48% to 62%. Optimal blood sugar levels fell from 60% of the population in 1999 to just 37% of the population by 2018. And poor glucose control rose from 8.6% to 13.7%. Now it's important to note that they made track of waist circumference, right? Not just obesity. The paper defines poor adiposity as a waist circumference above 40 inches for men and above 35 inches for women, which means that a lot of people with normal BMI still fall into this high risk category. But what you can see here is that it wasn't just one marker, right? It was a coordinated collapse of metabolic health. In addition, this study only covered from 1999 to 2018. Many newer studies show that the rates of diabetes and obesity have accelerated since 2018. So the problem, it's getting even worse. So now a new model has been proposed, published in the journal Nutrients in 2025. A team of clinicians and researchers created a new food pyramid that could serve as a better guide for the modern population especially given that the majority of adults today are already dealing with or at risk for metabolic disease. So at the base of this new pyramid, whole fat dairy, cheeses, plain yogurt, animal proteins like beef, poultry, eggs, pork, fish, shellfish, fats and oils like olive oil, butter, cream, lard, and tallow. And in the middle layer, we have low carb fruits and veggies, green, leafy, and other non-starchy vegetables, lemons, limes, olives, and avocados. At the top, to be eaten sparingly, we have starchy vegetables like squashes, potatoes, and onions. We have nuts and seeds, and we also have fruits like berries and melon. Now, to many people, the reversal of this food pyramid was obvious. And to make the point of that, even South Park, back in 2014, predicted this. The pyramid doesn't work. We've already tried it. It's upside down. What? Sir, the pyramid is upside down. Turn the pyramid upside down. You can't be serious. That would put butter and fat at the top Flip of the- Flip the damn food pyramid! This is not FDA approved! Sir, we've got a match. Nutrition is stabilizing! We've got a well-balanced vaccine, sir! 
Get the president on the phone. Tell him to have some steak with his butter. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking. What about red meat? What about saturated fat? Haven't we heard that those increase your risk of heart disease? Well, that's a common concern, but the reality is the data just doesn't back that up anymore. In fact, the authors point that out. There's very little high quality evidence to justify any health concerns about red meat or saturated fat. Now, there are plenty of other studies that I can cite on this, but I'll just highlight one more. This one was published in Frontiers in Nutrition, a peer reviewed open access journal that covers a broad range of topics in nutritional science. In 2022, researchers wrote, non-communicable diseases rose over the 20th century in parallel with increased consumption of processed foods, including sugar, refined flour, and rice and vegetable oils. Saturated fats from animal sources were inversely correlated with the prevalence of non-communicable diseases. And then there's the question of cost and sustainability, right? Isn't this diet just for the wealthy? Well, actually, no. One clinical trial done in the South Bronx, one of the poorest areas of the US, showed that people could stick with this way of eating for over a year. And get this, it only costs about $1 more per day than the standard diet. So let me be clear. I'm not saying everyone should adopt these guidelines, right? But we do need to acknowledge a few things. Number one, metabolic disease is central to almost every chronic condition that we see. Number two is that a high carbohydrate intake, particularly from refined and ultra processed sources, that worsens insulin resistance. And number three, the old pyramid has failed us, as evidenced by the numbers, especially for those who are already metabolically unhealthy. As the Nutrients paper puts it, people with metabolic disease cannot consume the same range of foods as those who are healthy. That's not just diet dogma, that's physiology. So look, it's pretty clear that the old pyramid didn't work. And now we have an alternative model proposed built on decades of clinical data, patient outcomes, and biochemical understanding. So if you're a patient or a clinician or just someone trying to feel better in your own body, this new pyramid may help you rethink how you eat. However, please remember this isn't for everyone and the key is figuring out what works for you. So if you'd like to download a visual of the new pyramid, I put a link to the study in the description below. And if you want more straight talk and evidence-based health content, subscribe, like, share the video. The evidence of what the science has given us has changed. So maybe our food pyramid should too.